Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a great week, had a great weekend, um, and you're progressing through this chapter in this week really well. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out, let me know. Um, I'm here for you and here to provide any um, answers to questions that you may have or just curiosity that you may have about this chapter. There typically is a lot of curiosity about this chapter, just in the nature of the beast. And um, just so I put all of this out there, I have a lot of um, substance abuse data and a lot of substance abuse um, experience. So if you have questions about any of this or you're curious about numbers for maybe with a state or a region or, you know, in general, just let me know and I will happily share those numbers with you or happily share different initiatives that are going on or different programs that may be available to you. Um, so again, reach out if you have any of those questions. I'm always happy to um, share any for information or knowledge that I have with you. So in looking back for this week, I just kind of want to highlight a few topics that I really think that are pertinent for you to take away from this week. So um, I want you to understand the different categories of drugs and where they where they're classified as. So it's important for you to acknowledge um, which category and classification different drugs are in. So that way you're knowledgeable about what kind of effects they have on the body and the brain. So in looking at alcohol as a depressant, um, benzo is typically a depressant or a calming agent. Um, marijuana is a psychoactive drug and a hallucinogen. It's considered to be a hallucinogen. Caffeine is a, um, it is also a psychoactive drug. It's also a, what they call, it's, uh, I don't know if you want to call it an upper, they say upper versus downer or depressant versus a, um, I guess psychoactive drug, you can use that term. So that's what caffeine is, um, different hallucinogens. So on this, I would really like for you to read that in your book and read the different categories and get more of an understanding of the classifications for those. So if you're not already doing that, please go back in your chapter in your book and read the classifications for things like benzos, for alcohol, for um, marijuana, and even caffeine. So make sure you're looking all of that. And I also want to reiterate the fact that because this is so widely popular right now and then it, people are pushing really hard, I know our government's pushing really hard and it will come to fruition that marijuana will be legalized um, and I'm not going to get into that battle. That is fact. Um, it's not my opinion or my stance on that. It's definitely, um, it's just fact. So talking about those things and how it is such a burst of subject, you're either one side or the other, you're really not in the gray. I've not really met anybody that's in the gray on this topic. Um, so I do want to just reiterate the facts that your book will highlight. And I also want to um, kind of make sure that you understand that these are not just willy-nilly facts that people are spouting out. They're actually research and driven based. It's not just a belief. Um, so you do have withdrawal symptoms um, from marijuana if you've been smoking for multiple days or, you know, you've been smoking for a very long time. You're going to have withdrawal symptoms. You're going to be irritable. You're not going to get hungry. You're not going to sleep well. Things like that. So that's a fact. That's not an opinion. Um, so if you do get asked that question, it's going to be that you do experience withdrawal symptoms. Um, you should also be able to, again, I say this in your PowerPoint, but you should also be able to identify the different percentages of alcohol to different categories of alcohol, so like beer, wine, malt liquor, and um, like a shot of 80 proof. So make sure that we're aware of what type of alcohol contains which type of percentage because, again, we're all adults. Um, if you decide to drink, then you should be aware of the percentage of alcohol that you're inputting in your body, and you should be aware of the level that you should or should not be drinking it. So those are very important facts to be knowledgeable about. So obviously beer has the lower amount of alcohol in it. 5% um, is usually the average. There obviously are higher percentages of beers, um, but 5% is the average. Wine, 7%. No, 12%. I'm so sorry. Um, malt liquor is 7%. And then your shot of, I mean, quote unquote, liquor as well would be 40%. I don't recommend people taking shots. Shots are dangerous. Please don't do that. Um, and then I also want you to be knowledgeable about um, the most commonly used drug, quote-unquote, or psychoactive drug, which is caffeine. 
Um, caffeine is a drug <laughs> and um, it's the most commonly used psychoactive drug. So please be aware of that. Um, there are variations of what people consider drugs. Caffeine is listed as a drug. Um, I personally think sugar should be listed as a drug because sugar is just as addictive as anything else, if not more, and has just as many effects on the brain as it does anything else. Um, we can talk about this a little bit more next week in your nutrition chapter. Um, but if you look at the research and you look at the data, the brain does not differentiate between sugar and cocaine. <laughs> So um, the brain sees both of them and activates the same reward system, and they both bind to neuroreceptors and release those endorphins that create the addiction. Um, it makes you feel good, boosts energy for a short amount of time, so you want more. Um, and once you continue to have more, then the brain wants more. Um, and you tend to have withdrawals from sugar. So a lot of times if you drink a lot of soda, you will get headaches from that. Um, withdrawal symptoms just like anything else because it is a drug. Um, unfortunately, people don't see it that way. And it makes me sad that people don't see it that way. But it does have the same reaction. The body has just as many problems adjusting to that as it does cocaine. Um, and again, we'll talk about this a little bit more next week, but I just kind of wanted to highlight and hit on that. And if you have questions about sugar, please, please, please ask me. Um, I'm, I've done a lot of homework on sugar and done a lot of presentations on sugar as a drug and um, trying to compel people to understand that there is no differentiation and um, it's equally as bad for your body and your brain. Your brain forms um, wave cells and neurons when you're on 10 weeks of sugar, it forms the same neurons as someone who is an alcoholic. So again, the brain is, it does not differentiate sugar from other outside drugs and it causes just as much damage to other organs as um, anything else. But nonetheless, that's off the topic of substance abuse. So getting back to the topic, um, I think I've covered everything in your PowerPoint pretty much to a T. If you have more questions about substance abuse or, or the substance abuse data, it's continuing to increase twofold. Um, there's so much money that's being pumped out to do to um, combat the opioid pandemic. Um, and just kind of the, the real struggles that people are having with this. So again, if you have questions about the data or you're, you just want more knowledge about initiatives or maybe what I'm doing in the county because I work in Jackson, Swain, Graham, a little bit in Macon and Haywood, um, and I dabble in Clay County as well. So if you have any questions about that data or Jackson County or you just have an experience or you have a question for yourself personally, please, please, please reach out. Um, I'm always here to help. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help. So uh, please reach out or ask questions as needed. And I hope everyone's having a great week.